Hello everyone, it's your girl Bonnie. Listen, I am, I see that I am live. Facebook changed some things and I'm looking for the chat and I'm assuming I'll be able to pick it up at some point. You know what though? I'm going to focus on getting the recipe done for you guys today and I'll figure out the chat a little later. So, it's so good to see you today. Happy Sunday. I um, had another book signing yesterday down in Richmond, Virginia. At, uh, there's a little section called Cary Town, which is really, really nice. So I went down, had another very successful book signing. Um, distanced myself, of course, I'm vaccinated, but 96% does not equal 100%, so I was, did what I, what I needed to do. So we're going to be making spaghetti uh, squash today. I have a really good recipe, and you know that I, especially now because it's hot, very simple in and out of the kitchen, and we'll be done with this in no time. So the first thing you need to do, let me go over the ingredients. First of all, you need obviously spaghetti squash, and I've gone ahead and have this one. And I'm going to talk to you about how you get all the seeds out and all that stuff. And then I'm going to add to this recipe red bell pepper, garlic, and I'm going to do, now look at this. I pulled this out of my garden this morning. I took it and washed it, of course, of course so it's, you see the, um, I have it wrapped in paper towels to keep it nice and fresh, and I have it in the refrigerator. But look at this. There's nothing like getting fresh stuff out of your own garden. So I picked this this morning, and it looks like a lot, but you know, those of you who cook know that spinach, once you add some heat to it, it, get, it just really reduces to almost nothing. So it looks like a lot, but it really isn't. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, oh, the other thing that I did that I uh, think you guys are going to really appreciate. You remember last week I did the balsamic uh, reduction of the white uh, balsamic vinegar? I did that again this week and it goes really, really nice over this dish. So the first thing you need to do is to obviously cut your spaghetti squash in half. And I do it um, lengthwise. You could do it that way. Sometimes people will use the um, use the spaghetti squash as a bowl because it, it really does. It, it's, the skin is very, very thick. And one of the reasons why I went ahead and, and cut it before we came on was because I was going to make a lot of noise and my producer probably wouldn't like that very much. So, hello, Thomasina. I can't see you. I have no idea where the chat is. So, we're going to have to figure this out because Facebook changed um, the live again and I'm not sure what I'm looking at. I made some assumptions. I guess I should never do that when dealing with Facebook or anyone else for that matter. I came on early, but I did not realize I would not be able to see my chat line. So at the very end, I'm hoping I'll be able to chat with you guys. If not, we'll still get the recipe done. How good is that? So once you remove that, all of the inside, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm scraping it out with a spoon. And we're going to take all of this out. And you know what I also do? You guys know I told you on many occasions that I don't throw anything out uh, or I try not to. So I'm going to take the seeds from this. And I took a few out of one that I went ahead and already roasted out so you can see what it, what you should do if you decide to follow suit. So I'm trying to remove all this stuff out of the uh, out of the shell of this. And once you're done with that, this is what it looks like. It's all nice and clean. And I take some of the seeds. I'm going to go ahead and plant spaghetti squash because it's not too late. It'll come in in the fall. And you take the seeds and you remove it from the all of the membranes that's in there once you scrape it out. And I'm going to put these aside. And I normally put them on parchment paper and I set them on my windowsill. I dry them. Or sometimes I may take them into my greenhouse and, um, and dry them. But you need to dry them for a couple of days. And then you can go ahead and 
pot them. And again, you're going to get those potting lessons once I have an opportunity to be able to do this outside. So once you do that, you're then going to take a little bit of olive oil. You can also use avocado oil. And you're going to take your pastry brush. I've seen some people use paper towels. If you don't have a pastry, pastry brush, that works as well. You just take that and you're going to put a light coating both inside and around the edges, top edges of this. And by the way, you should already have gone ahead and preheated your oven to 350 degrees. And once you coat this on the inside, you then take this and put it, place it in your oven, and you're going to bake that until it gets nice and soft, very much again like you would with a baked potato. And once you're done with that, once you pull it out of the oven, this is what it looks like. And I've gone ahead and I've taken one half of it so that we're going to start to create our spaghetti. Now you see what this looks like? Now this has a very it's slightly sweet and nutty flavor to it. And believe it or not, very much like flour pasta that we all love, this will fill you up and it's very, very good. And I treat it just like I would um, the pasta that we normally eat. And this is also very good for people who have uh, issues with gluten or if you just want to cut down on the, on the amount of calories that you're consuming, uh, this is a good route to go. So you take your fork and you're just going to pull it forward. You see what I'm doing there? And it creates these nice little things that look like spaghetti. I don't know who came up with this idea. Whoever it was, thank you. <laughs> because you can make all kind of wonderful recipes with this. And I'm going to do a recipe that I normally do with regular pasta uh, today. And it's, um, I guess you would call it a pasta florentine. I'm going to take that and you see what it looks like. I'm going to set this off to the side because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our red bell pepper and our garlic. We're going to go ahead and cut that up. Because I want this to be nice and pretty on Jul Julianne in this as well. And I'm going to go ahead and preheat. We'll turn our fire on here for our saute pan. And then you're going to take, and I want this to be nice and garlicky, so I have my elephant garlic. You guys know I love this. I can't wait to pull some out of the garden. I planted it this year. Normally I just plant the regular garlic that we all use. And I always go to the market and buy this type, but I have lots of it in my garden this year, and I can't wait for that to come in so I can share it with you. So we're going to take this garlic and you're going to chop it up. I love garlic. It's also very, very good for you. So I tend to put a lot of nice, uh, I put a nice amount of garlic in the foods that I'm making. And that will also be the case today. So I'm going to go ahead and finish chopping this up. I am, um, my husband's going to be cooking on the grill tonight. So uh, he's actually doing, I'm having fish because I don't eat chicken. And he's going to have grilled chicken. And we're going to serve that. I'm going to serve that uh, along with this. And that's going to be dinner for us tonight. Just a little bit more. So what are you guys up to today? Uh, you know what? While I'm waiting for that to heat up, you guys know I'll, I always share with you what's blooming in the garden. And this is foxglove. Isn't it beautiful? This is blooming in my garden today. And I have this 
dotted around in different areas. It grows very well in sun and partial shade. And it's a really, you can see it's a very elegant, elegant plant. And this is the Beard's uh, Tongue variety, by the way. And it was actually, the stems, at least in my garden, were probably twice this, so it's very, very tall. And I love to dye it around my garden because it makes it, everything look so nice. But that's what's blooming today, as well as my evening primrose is now blooming with roses. And last week I shared with you that um, the that the uh, peonies are blooming. They're starting to fade. And I get sad when that happens, but what are you going to do? But I plant in my garden. I plant planted it so that. Throughout the season, something is always in bloom. So uh, when something fades, something else comes in. So it makes it really fun to be able to go out and spend time and you never have, um, you know, those open spots. You know what? I, Julianne, I think I'm going to go ahead and change my mind. You can do that when you're cooking, you know. So I'm going to chop this. So I'm kind of thinking what it's going to look like. Once I toss it together. You guys know I've never made this before, right? <laughs> I do this all the time. I will uh, think about recipes and what the different flavors are going to be like. And I've never made this dish before, but I know it will work because I've done some components of it on other occasions. So you're going to give this a nice, light little saute. And you notice that I did not saute off the garlic separate from um, from the red bell pepper. I do that all the time because it helps to cook the garlic without burning it. A lot of times if you're doing multiple things in the kitchen, that's the way I get to cheat and not worry about anything burning. Uh, I'll just toss in some of my other vegetables, whatever it is I might be adding to the dish. And it, the uh, moisture from the vegetables keeps the garlic from burning. And you get a nice little saute and nothing's lost. Now you can see I am, this is coming up really, really nice. I'm going to add some more spinach to that. Because again, once you start cooking this, it's going to, um, reduced to almost nothing. This spinach is so good. I had a really good uh, season with spinach, spinach this year. It's getting rather hot outside, so I might have another month maybe before I rotate that out and plant something else in this place. Everything is doing really well. Although I started, I thought I started a little early, but actually our winter, um, it just seems seems to have kept going and going and going and finally we're getting hot days and I'm like, why was I wishing for this hot weather to come? Because <laughs> it's really warm outside today. Although my husband said that we're going to get a little break in the temperature because we've been in the 90s now for the past few days and I love the spring and summer but the hot weather, once it gets over 85 degrees, I'm usually not feeling it. I don't like it very much, so. Which is why I get up at 4 a.m. in the summertime, go out and get my gardening done, and by the time it starts to warm up, I am indoors. So we're just gonna soft into soft just like I'm doing here. And then we're gonna add a little salt. Not too much, just a little bit, as well as black pepper. And then the final step is we're going to take this Delicious spaghetti squash. 
and we're going to toss that in with this. And you really, this has been cooked off, so we are like 90% done. I'm going to scrape this in here. Give it a nice little toss. Because this is already cooked, so you don't want to overcook this. Just want to add a little heat because it's sitting on the side. This smells so, so good. And then you're going to take that balsamic reduction, probably maybe a good two tablespoons or so. You're going to drizzle that in there. One thing I, I did forget to mention last week because I added lemon to the balsamic and I, I would imagine some of you were wondering why I did that. When you reduce vinegar, it actually gets sweet. And I wanted that sweet and tart flavor going on. So I add the lemon juice so that you get a nice balance of flavor. Not have it too tart or too sweet. Okay. So this is pretty much the dish. And this is what it looks like. 